If you're an ordinary person doing ordinary things, then a name brand tape measure from the local store will do you just fine. I mean, we don't even care there's a little bit of wiggle on this thing at the end, so how accurate could it be anyway? Well, it turns out that little bit of wiggle is highly engineered and actually makes it more accurate, but we'll talk about that later. But what if you're not an ordinary person and need to do something rather extraordinary with tape measure, where complete and total incontrovertible precision is a must? Maybe you're the Olympics, or giant oil company, or maybe crime scene investigators, government agencies. Well, if you're in the U.S., then you send your measuring tapes to NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, who are the ultimate authority on measurement, and who just happen to have, deep underground, a closely climate-controlled room with a special 200-foot bench with lasers, microscopes, thermometers everywhere, computers, and all kinds of math that will give you a report that will allow you to use your tape measure like it's the most accurate tape measure that you can possibly get. Being me, I could not turn down an invitation to visit. I even brought a really, really old tape measure from possibly the 1930s or 40s that we measured over four feet to really high resolution. And boy, were we surprised. I'll show you the results in a bit. But first, go down in the comments and give me your best guess. I'll even accept metric. I'm really interested to know how people think it's going to measure. I met Dr. Vincent Lee in what is now known as the Long Range Interferometry Facility, though most people know it as the NIST tape tunnel. It's not cheap to send your tapes there, and we'll talk about that at the end, and also how to get something very similar for way cheaper. But how they do it, and what you get for that money, is quite extraordinary, even if you're an ordinary person. The tape tunnel, let's start right here, which is the laser interferometer. Uh, it is the most precise reference you can get. We calibrate tapes pretty much to a certain level that most people cannot use, you know, because the resolution of measuring tapes at best maybe go to one thirty seconds of an inch or a millimeter, and we calibrate to precision much better than one millimeter. So uh, we have a custom written software to capture the data as we are measuring. Uh, this, as you can see, if you pay close attention to the user interface, is a Windows XP machine. Yes, it's a Windows XP machine because we actually don't need that much computing power to calibrate a measuring tape. You're just measuring along one distance. And as far as data goes, we have, again, data from our laser reformer and 14 temperature sensors along the measuring branch. Uh, you can't really see them very well. Um, there's one right here which measures air temperature and then a few more pasted under the bench, under the thick insulating foam to measure the tape bench temperature. Now, as far as temperature goes, the temperature in this lab is controlled to 20 degrees Celsius, plus and minus, uh, if I remember correctly, 0 0.05 degrees Celsius. And we record that temperature, number one, to adjust for any uh, tape temperature fluctuations, because we like to measure everything at 20 degrees Celsius or report it to as if it was 20 degrees Celsius. So we measure whatever temperature it is, correct it if necessary in the software. Camera right now. So in order to tie in the reference laser measurement to the measuring tape, we have this tape carriage, which uses the retroreflector, which interfaces with the laser interferometer and a optical microscope that has a set of crosshairs for you to look through and align to the hash mark that you want to measure. So right now, I have it aligned to the zero mark of the tape, okay? So when I'm at this point, I will zero the laser, say this is my zero mark, and then move the carriage to each subsequent mark that the customer wants to calibrate. So if this is a seven meter tape and they want to calibrate at once every meter, I will start at zero and move from meter to meter. That has been zero, we can move, and you can see that it is tracking my displacement from the zero mark. And when I get close to the one meter location, I'll look through the microscope, align the crosshairs to the one meter mark, level the carriage. Good to go. And that is the distance from the zero mark to the one meter mark. Can we take this one further down to see what the accuracy is like down at the end? Because we measured one meter. Mm -hmm. Oh, right? sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. go all the way to the seven meter mark. So, yeah, 
are about you know 63 micrometers off from nominal. Very good oh, tape. Yeah. Very good tape. That's now, good tape. yeah, that's about a thickness of a human hair, uh, which you probably can't really discern from with your eyes when you measure from a uh, with this tape. So right. it's very good tape. This is the one I keep in my toolbox upstairs in my office. Nobody touches it, you know. So <laughs> um, a lot of tapes uh, have to be tensioned in order to achieve the proper graduation spacing. Um, in the ASME specifications, they not only do they specify MPE, but they specify an amount of tension that should be placed on the tape when it's being measured or used or calibrated. And for tapes that are um, 100 feet or 30 meters long or less, a tension of 10 pounds or 5 kilograms respectively should be applied to it. So right now, this is a 7 meter long tape and have 5 kilograms applied to it. So simple dead weight loading. So it hooks onto here. There is a metal tape which goes along this pulley and runs along here and clamps onto the tape being tested. And of course, after applying tension, you have to do what's called snapping the tape where we'll slide something under the tape to lift it up off the bench because when you have a really long tape, or any tape as a matter of fact, there's friction between the tape and the bench and what is needed is to just, it could be, you know, a piece of paper, just slide underneath to lift the tape off the bench. This is really short tape, so I gotta do this without moving very much, but if I have a 200 foot tape, I have to get something under it and slide it along to take the traction forces out of the tape, you know, so. So I borrowed a tape measure from uh, a friend. And this one, he said, has been in the family since probably the 1940s. The internet tells me this uh, Stanley was made from the late 30s, I think into the 50s sometime. Uh, he thinks it's been in the family longer. It actually is a promotional one. Uh, I'll show you guys a picture later, but it was actually looked like a sort of a giveaway from like a lighting store uh, somewhere in Texas. And uh, probably never thought it would make its way here to NIST uh, to be checked uh, to see how accurate it is. But uh, let's see what we can find out. All right, so I have a tape set up here on the bench. And what we're gonna do is go, we can't, because we're set up for a different experiment right now, I can't go from the zero mark, so I'll go from the two inch mark to the 50 inch mark. So we'll evaluate the first four feet or so of this tape, or four feet interval on this tape and see how accurate it is. So I'm going to zero to the two inch mark. I'm not going to look at the number so I don't bias myself to try to get 48 inches. All right, here we go. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty yeah, good. For what's basically a promotional giveaway. It's within 22,000. Within 22,000. From the two inch mark to the 50 inch mark now. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't the longest measurement you've ever no, done. No, no. But, you know, for a real uh, consumer grade yes. tape, uh, that's better than I expected. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. Oh, awesome. So the tape measure that I brought is about 22 thousandths over nominal over four feet. Knowing that, correcting for temperature and maybe if I brought a microscope, in theory, this could give me an incredibly accurate measurement that I would have great confidence in. Now, I didn't get an official report with mine. Those are very expensive and start at $600 and can even be more if your tape is especially long. Here's a sample report from a 7 meter or 21 foot tape that shows the deviations from nominal at specified intervals. I'll link to this report in the video description. If you want something that's the next best thing to what NIST gives you, but at a fraction of the price, there's lots of places that sell measuring tapes that are NIST traceable. This should give you a lot of confidence, but very much on the cheap. Okay, I promised you at the beginning that I'd let you know why tape measures have that little bit of wiggle in the hook on the end. It wiggles the same amount as the thickness of the hook. This is so it's accurate if you put the hook over the edge of something, but also if you use the tape to measure the inside dimensions of something. That little bit of wiggle makes sure the hook itself does not distort your measurements. Hey also, did you know that I launched a Discord server recently? Lots of interesting stuff going on there, so check out a link in the description. We're about to launch a really fun project that I think you'll love, and that's where we're going to be coordinating efforts. 
Thanks to Vincent, Nist, and all my wonderful Patreon supporters that make this kind of content possible. If you were surprised by something, let me know. If you liked it and want to see more content like this, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, really let me know by giving it the double thumbs down. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.